Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today we look at how to build this very customized door where you can have a parametric opening angle and several other advantages. Let's look at a few of them now. So this door here, I'm seeing it both in floor plan and in 3D. You can see right away the opening angle here on the right is now 45 degrees. If I change this to maybe 180 degrees, the door is fully open. If I then take it down maybe to 120 degrees, it gets updated. If I put it to 90 degrees, that's still doing okay. 30 degrees and even 0 degrees, fully closed. In addition, it's optimized to show the right level of detail that you need. Let's see that by opening this door again, maybe to 60 degrees. This is what you see in the fine level of detail. If I take it down to medium, you can see the panel is more simplified now. And if I take it further down to the coarse level, you only see a single line for the panel, even though the swing line is still there. And of course, the door itself is fully parametric. If I now select it here, go to type properties and change its height to maybe 2300. You can see it's getting taller now. The same goes for width. If I change this back to maybe 300 and then apply, it's getting more narrow. So let's see together how we can build this door again from scratch and learn key Revit skills along the way. Firstly, let's close this project. And then we can go to File, New, Family. Choose the metric door template, that's a good place to start from. And in here, because I want to see those frames at higher levels of detail, I will select them both. Go to visibility settings, tick the box to say they should show in plan views, and untick course. I only want to see them in medium and fine. Next step is to make sure we put our hinge at the right location. If I put the hinge here, for example, where these two planes intersect, I won't be able to open the door fully because then this frame will get in the way of the door panel. So I need to get this hinge to be here instead. To make that position a bit more official, let's make a reference plane. Going from here to here. And I will now name this one hinge. Maybe extend it a bit more this way. That's nice. So, we need to now make the parametric angle possible. Let's select and isolate these two planes. And now I will draw a reference line. Make sure you select reference line and not reference plane. Now we can start this line from the intersection there of the two planes. And maybe make it initially like this. Next step is to make sure that our endpoint of this reference line here always stays at the location where this plane intersects this one. And to do that, I will need to do a double alignment. Let's go to Modify, Align, select this plane there, and then use a Tab key until I can get to the endpoint of this reference line. And that's the one there. I can now click the point and then lock it. Repeat the same step, but this time we can go for this plane instead, lock it to this line, and there we go. Next step, we can make our angular dimension to control this opening angle. I can now turn this into a new parameter called opening angle. Let's make it instance because we don't want to make a new door type every time we change this angle, yeah? so. If I now go to my family types window and use a new angle, let's see how it flexes. If I do 45 degrees, apply, it's working. Now we can move on to creating the door panel itself. Let's reset the view and just make a new extrusion. The first step before you draw anything here is to set the right work plane. We need to set the extrusion to be based on this reference line here. So I'm going to go to set, pick a plane, and then select 
this reference line. You see there's a dashed boundary there, noting the new plane I'm going to select. Click now. And I can pick this line to start my sketch for the extrusion. Lock it after you pick. And now we can draw a second line starting from this endpoint, but going in a 90 degree direction from the first line. Next step, I will select this line there, hold down my control key and drag it to make a copy. And the same goes for the second line. Let's make a copy of it as well. Control track. And then I can go ahead and trim those four lines to make a closed loop. Next step, I want to make sure the distance from this line to this one is the same as the door thickness. To do so, we can make a dimension from the reference line to the sketch line and turn that into a new parameter. Let's call this one lift thickness. Next step, I want to control the width of the lift, so I need to make another dimension now. We can now go to dimension and start from this line to the end point on that side of the reference line. The green line here, remember, we need to get its endpoint at this end. This is where it gets a bit confusing because here, if I now see this point here, it's actually the endpoint of my sketch line. You can see that because when you go here and look at the status bar, when I have this point highlighted, the status bar says sketch line. I need to now press tab a few times until it says now, as you can see, reference lines reference. I can now click once and place the dimension there. Select this dimension. It's now time to turn it into lift width. Okay. Click on here to finish the extrusion. And for the extrusion end, which is essentially the height of the extrusion, we can now tie that to the height parameter of the door. This parameter is there already. Because I started from the door template, if I go now to exterior, that's the parameter we used. So because we've done that, this 3D panel now has the same height as the door opening. Let's change the scale slightly so we don't have that massive text in the way. Here we go, much better. Alright, next step, let's make sure our lift has the same width as the opening. We can now go to plan view again and then make sure if I check under here lift width should equals to width which is another default parameter in this door template that gives me 1000 and that's the same value there now we know we're in the right direction click OK to confirm this and next step is to make sure this lift panel is not that thick at the moment it looks so thick that makes me think about a vault door, you know, when people put money and treasure in here and then lock them up. That's not realistic in our case here. So let's change this value from family types and uh, lift thickness to maybe 50. Now that looks much better. Anyway, the key thing about this family is it has this opening angle that is parametric. If I now change it to maybe 90 degrees. You can see that updated nicely. How about 30 degrees and then we can move on. Okay. Next step is to make sure we can get in here our swing annotation. That dash line, remember, that we see in plan view. Let me try and isolate a few reference planes that I think I'll need. So maybe from here to here and that one as well. This panel, this reference plane. Let's now isolate them by elements. I find it's easier to do this way uh, when I work in a busy family with lots of lines and dimensions and objects because then you can be sure you're not snapping to the wrong elements. Now, I can now go to annotate and create a symbolic line. This is the one I want to use, the center arcs. And let's begin drawing it from the center point here. We can now specify the start point of the arcs and now the end point. Bang on that reference line. 
You can see now, as soon as I finish drawing it, there are a few temporary dimensions showing up, and I can now click on some of them to make them permanent. The first one needed is this opening angle there, and then this radius here, and also I want to lock the end point of my arcs to this reference plane. Okay, now let's try to turn this opening angle into using our opening angle parameter that we created. And next, we can turn that radius into the same dimension as our opening door width. I can see now it's getting more in sync with the other object already. Let's make those dimensions a bit smaller so we can see our drawings a bit more. Here we go. There's a small problem here. When I select these arcs, I can see this is now a solid line. And the line type is doors projection. If I want it to look more like a swing line for annotation purposes, I should change this now to hidden lines projection. I know some people prefer using something with a right name like plan swing projection or plan swings cut, but for me the dash line here is more to my liking. Feel free to use your own lifestyles though, if that suits you better. So it's time now to test our setup. If I now reset everything there, and try to change some dimensions. Maybe this width can now be 900. And my opening angle can now be 60 degrees. You can see everything is now in sync and behaving nicely. So this will be what people see in our project at their medium level of detail. Let's make sure that's the case though. We haven't changed visibility settings for those elements. I can now select this panel there, go to visibility, and untick the box for fine and the box for coarse. We only need it to show at medium. Now let's change gear for a moment and see what the door should look like at the coarse level of detail. And to preview how that looks like in this family editor, you can go down here, click on visibility preview and turn that on. This reference line, even though you see it right now, it won't show in the project. Reference lines and reference planes they only show up in Family Editor. So if I now hide this for a moment, you see we are missing something there. We need a single line now to annotate that lift at course level of detail. And it cannot use the same reference line we created for the 3D lift because the starting point of that line, instead of from here, should be from here. Remember our frame here and there, those frames that don't show at this level of detail. So now the next step is to create our second reference line. Make sure you set the work plane to the reference level. We don't want it to have any ties with the previous reference line. And I can now activate this command, start drawing from this point. Just like before, let me first isolate the two planes I want to use first. I don't want to accidentally snap my lines to the wall there. I want to start it from my reference planes. So with them selected, I can now go to isolate elements. And finally start drawing the second reference line. Similar to with the other one, I can now do a double alignment to say this reference plane should define the end point of this reference line. And this one as well should do the same thing. Moving on, we can create a second angular parameter to show that angle and also make sure that is the same with the opening angle. You can see that flexing already. If I now reset my view, I have now two parallel reference lines. And the second one, the one we just created, should host a single line representing our door lift at the course level of detail. Let's isolate it now, along with those two lines. And begin drawing the line using our symbolic line tool. And this time make sure you set the work plane to be this second reference line. Go to set now, pick a plane, and then select this line. We can now go back to symbolic line, and then pick it for our line. Lock it as well, that's a good idea. 
It is now running the entire length of this reference line, but we can make it shorter by dragging its endpoint like this. The next step is to make sure this line length here should equal our door opening width. We can now click on this temporary dimension to make it permanent. Maybe bring it to the other side and then link it to width. If I now reset the view, I can see that line there is already doing well for me. Nevertheless, if you look closely in this area, you can see now that the black line is running short. It's not meeting that blue arc there. And ideally it should. That is because we're using a different center point for the arcs and a different point for the start point of this line. But this is easy to fix in this case. I can now just turn off visibility preview and make sure this line here, it ends where we have this end phase of the 3D door panel. To do so, I'm going to go align and then align that plane to the end point of this line. Oh, I couldn't because this dimension is still in play there. We need to remove it first. And then try the alignment one more time. So align, blend, and point. Lock them there. For the next step, let's hide those for a moment. It's getting a bit more busy. So hide the element. And let's see now if the width will drive our geometry as expected. If I now change this to 1200, you can see this black line for the course level of detail has extended itself to meet both the 3D face there and therefore this arcs. All right, now before I bore you to death with this family editor, let's try and place it in a project and we can see the progress we've made. Let's go to File, New, Project, Architectural Template, it's good for now. And just make a simple wall. Does it have to be so long? Maybe 6 meters, fine. And then load our door family into this. Let's place it there. And turn on thin lines for a better look. Maybe a scale can be 1 to 50, that's fine. Yes, you can see straight away, we are now in the fine level of detail. If I change this to coarse, that's exactly what I needed. So a clean point there for the swing and minimal presentations of my door. If I change this to medium now, it's getting much better in terms of detail. But that's a slight problem. I don't want this line to be there. And also this panel is starting not from the expected hinge point that I set out for ourselves. Let's go back to the family and fix those. So back to here now. Easy one first. Get this line, change its visibility settings to say only show at coarse, not medium, not fine. And for the shifting of this panel, I think it has something to do with this plan here. It doesn't update with the door positions. Let's reset everything first. And you can see, I placed this hinge plane there in the beginning quite arbitrarily. I didn't really constrain the distance between this plane and this one. That's why when the wall gets thicker, I'll show you if I now select this wall here. And make it a bit thicker, maybe instead of 150 in thickness, I can make it 300. You can see the hinge point is now there, because this plane doesn't move with the wall. And that's one way to change that easily. Just make a dimension from the hinge plane to this wall face plane. And then lock it. Now, if I change the wall thickness one more time to 300. You can see that hinge point there is still at the right location. Here we go. So, let's test that out in the project. It is now at medium. Looking good, when I go to course, even better. So, the next thing to do is to create the fine representation of our door leaf. Let's make it in a separate family, because later on, we will want to... Well, firstly, let me save this family first. 
I wouldn't want to lose all the hard work we've done, okay? Let's say parametric swing. So I was saying that we need to make that separate door panel for the fine level of detail in a separate family because later on I will want to tie it to this reference plane here and make the whole panel move and rotate with this plane. When you move and rotate a complex object in a Revit family, always try to make that object a self-contained external family. In other words, a netic component you can throw around without worrying about it breaking. So, in upsaying, let's go to File now, New, Family. And for the nested components, we can use the genetic model template. Not much to see in here, so let's create our first reference plane here. Because I want the distance from here to there will be my panel width. Make this panel width then, and give it a good name. Well, there's only one object in this family, so I can shorten the name into just width. Go to the front elevation now, and let's make another one for the height. Looking good. Next step, we can make sure our width and height have some meaningful value. Let's go and make this 2200, and this can now 1200. Here we go. Let's make now our extrusion to represent the lower panel. I'm going to pick and lock four times. And then use the trim command, make a closed loop. For our panel here, I want to make it a bit more detailed so I can add in here a vision panel as well. Click finish. It's quite thick at the moment. Again, I'm not having a vote for my money, so I don't need this kind of door at the moment. Let's go and make this only 50 mil. And back to the exterior elevation or the front elevation, we can make sure that this gap, this gap, and this one are equal or at least controlled in a way. I can now add an extrusion for this and make this a parameter. I'm dimensioning, by the way, from this plane to this line. Again, from this plane to this line. And from this plane to the last line. Let's call this one offset. Or side offset. This one, top offset, obviously. And the other one, you guessed it. We can call it base offset. Now in reality, the side offset will be the smallest. Let's do 100. The top can be 150. And the base, because you have a kick plate, let's do this 300 there. Finish it off. We have the hole there at the moment. Let's put in there a second extrusion to represent our glass panel. So I'm going to pick and lock four more times. Already a closed loop, we can now do finish. Go to 3D. It's super thick again. For the glass panel, let's say we want it to be 20 mil thick. And we want to center this panel in its opening as well. So extrusion start can now be 50 minus 20 divided by 2, that's 15. And then this can be 35. Here we go. Now, I kind of want to do this properly, so let's change the family category now to doors. What it does is, it gives you some default subcategories to choose from. If I click on this panel here, I can change the subcategory to panel. And the vision panel can now be of the class category. Alright. Shaded mode, looking not very good smart at the moment because we need also the handle. Let's go to the front view and create a reference plane for the height of our handle. This dimension is actually standardized for all doors on the planet or at least most of them 
and I think that's about 900 let's do it and lock it as well we can now use this plane here to create the handle let's go to the reference level view set the work plane to be handle and then make our sweep for the handle itself let's go for sweep sketch path and I might want to go for something like this probably move it a bit this way 50 mil is fine and finish it's time now to go in 3D and edit our profile okay so that's your handle you can make it as detailed as you like but for now it's a concept that counts so let's proceed with this actually let me also mirror it to the other side just like that now we're good to go I'm gonna load it now into our project and you know what it's good now to uh, before doing so just change the material here as well from manage object styles under the class category let's give it class as the material just so we can be clear about our intention with this panel let's bring it into the door parametric swing family all right now that's loaded and ready to be placed in this family but it's gets a bit tricky here because we now need to make sure that it's hosted on this reference plane here so we can know that the rotation will work also for this detail to our panel to do so let's isolate this reference line along with the two reference planes at its starting point all right it's time now to set the work plane to be this reference line and now we can create another reference line perpendicular to this line but starting from the same starting point I'm gonna go to reference line now same starting point but perpendicular here we go you will see why a bit later on but for now I want to make sure these two lines they rotate together if I now change this to 30 degrees yes they do next step we need to place the panel family so we can go to component make sure the plane is set I can click on show to see it that's looking great we can now place our placement point there and press tab to rotate this panel and align it to this reference line you may have to do a few times and there you have it let's place it somewhere over there turn off the plane for clarity and now it's a bit uh, of a gimmicky kind of move but this is from my experience what works let's try to make a few dimensions from this plane to this panel now when you go to this panel here it's important which element you snap into if you look at the status bar down there make sure it says center front back because we want to dimension from plane to plane or from in this case reference line to plane we don't want to dimension maybe to this face here of the vision panel make sure you have a stronger reference go from reference line to planes and the same goes for the other side from this line there dimension from it to a reference plane in this case easier to see because the plane is wider than the geometry but try not to dimension to the geometry like this always go for the plane okay next step I can move this into position it should start from the same placement point there and now these two dimensions they become zero and zero as you can see it's now crucial that you select each one of them and lock them like that and like this another thing to do now is to create an angular dimension again a very gimmicky trick but just do it from this reference line there to here press tab to dimension to the front back center plane again watch my status bar one more time make sure that's happening it's, it's saying now center front back 
click to place the dimension and now it's saying zero degrees we can now click on this angular dimension and lock it as well so it's time for the test if i now go and change this angle everything's flexing nicely as you can see i can even take it beyond 120 and make it even 180 here we go nothing flex because we knew the tricks that we just created all right now in terms of visibility i can select this detailed panel go to visibility settings and ensure we untick coarse and medium we only want to see it at the fine level of detail okay to confirm and now let's test it in the project project one still it doesn't try to override the existing family instance there for me because the name has been changed doesn't matter i'll place it to the side like so yeah you see this one is still family one i'll remove it and this is the one we can use from now on if i now change this view to be at the fine level of detail here we go very nicely done medium cost fine everything in sync now and very important as well let's check and make sure our angle parameter works and yes it does even at 180 degrees you see that well there's obviously things to do with the handle but you get the concept if the door has to open very widely even at 175 degrees it should work if i now go to 3d everything there should work as well except from the height and width of this panel if we go back to the family very quickly i'll show you why when i select this panel there and then go to edit type is height and width they are not tied to anything yet in this host family so the next logical step is this go to height and link it to the door height similarly go to width and link it to the door width and for the ultimate test let's bring it back into a project one more time check out 3d and here we go again changing the angle parameter is going to be the joy of my day and i can keep doing this it's going to work all right so basically that's everything we need to know for now obviously you need to add in extra elements like an internal frame there to block out the brickwork but in terms of fundamental concepts this is how you can make a parametric door with a parametric opening angle that shows well at each level of detail in your Revit model have a practice on this new tutorial hope you can find it useful for your workflow and I'll see you soon in our next video